Hello everyone, Michael here. So today I'm gonna go over the Boyer Moore voting algorithm. I hope I said that right. So what this algorithm will allow you to do is find the majority element in an array in linear time and constant space, which is pretty useful. You should definitely consider subscribing if you like this type of content. I post a video every single week. So without further ado, let's jump into an example. So first let's describe what a majority element is. It is an element in an array that appears more than n over two times where n is the size of our array, hence the majority keyword. So let's say we have the following array. The majority element in this case is two since the length of our array is nine and there are a total of five number twos. So nine divided by two, n over two, would be four and five is obviously greater than four, so that is our majority element. So to solve this problem, we're gonna initialize two different variables. The first one is called candidate, which is the element we are considering as the majority, and then another variable called count, which is the number of times we have seen the candidate. So starting at index zero, we're gonna loop over our array. And since our count is zero, we can just take the number two, which is at index zero, as our candidate so far. So candidate is two, and then our count is going to become one because we've seen one number two so far. Then we're gonna to move to the next position and now we are looking at a number one. So we're gonna compare the number that we are looking at with our current candidate. If they are different, that means that we need to decrement our count. So our count is going to become zero since two is not equal to one. And just like the previous step, when our count is zero, we're going to update our candidate to the current index. Every time we update a new candidate, that means our count must be one. So our candidate is going to become number one, and then our count is gonna become one since we have one number one so far. Then we move to the number two. One is not equal to two, so our count, we're gonna decrement it to zero. Since our count is zero, we're gonna take the new candidate our candidate becomes two and our count becomes one. We move to the next position and two is equal to two. So that means we're going to increase our count in this case. So our candidate is still two and then our count becomes two. We move to the right one more time and two once again is equal to two. We're gonna increase our count. So our count is now three. Then we move to one, two is not equal to one and that means we decrease our count, so our count is now two. We move to number one, two is not equal to one, decrease our count, so our count is now one. Then we move to the number three, two is not equal to three, so we decrease our count to zero, and that means we need to take the new candidate at the current position we're looking at, so our candidate becomes three and our count becomes one. And then finally, we're gonna move to the number two, two is not equal to three, so we decrease our count to zero, take the new candidate, and we are left with candidate equal to two and count equal to one. And so by the end of looping over our array, whatever element is assigned to our candidate variable must be the majority element. So I'm sure you might be wondering, well, why does this work? So let's look at some simple examples. Two is our majority element in all of these arrays. The number of twos in each array is greater than n divided by two, where n is the size of all of the arrays. And as you can see, no matter where the twos are inside of the array, the beginning, the end, or if they're split up, the majority element will always be the candidate at the very end of looping over each array. So as long as you always do have a majority element, you will always be able to find it in linear time without extra space. Okay, so let's implement the code for this solution. We are given an integer nums, and then we need to return an integer, which will be our majority element. So the first thing we wanna do is initialize the candidate and count variables that we talked about. So we could say int candidate is gonna be equal to zero, and then int count is gonna be equal to zero. And now we just need to loop over our nums array. So we could say int element over nums. And so here we wanna check if the count is zero. Because remember, if our count is zero, that means we need to assign a new candidate. So we'll say if count equals zero, then we're gonna say candidate is equal to the current element that we're looking at. And then down here, all we need to do is compare the element with the candidate. And depending on if they're equal or not, we're gonna decrement or increment. So we could say if element is equal to candidate, 
then we are going to increase our count, plus plus count. Otherwise, decrease our count. And when we come down here, all we need to do is return our candidate. So that is actually it for the majority voting algorithm. So let's uh, submit this to make sure it works, and it does. So as you can see, very simple to implement. So like I mentioned before, the time complexity is gonna be linear. We do one loop over our nums array. We touch each index a single time. And then our space complexity is constant. We don't initialize any extra memory. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you got some use out of this algorithm. You can solve this problem in many different ways, but this is definitely the most efficient way to solve it. Definitely like and subscribe if you like my content. I release videos every single week. And check out my Patreon if you want to join the private Discord channel. And with that, I will see you guys next time.